So for a lot of these kind of reasons, we just started sticking up for people, because it's just a matter of how you treat people. And, uh, and that is what the public sector, the public service is supposed to be about, is taking how do you treat people and take care of people. That is our responsibility. <laughs> but we've lost the human aspect of it in favor of the dollar aspect. And uh, that's, that's been hurting people for generations, for eons. I mean, I guess that's how our imperialistic society works. You know, you know you may tell that uh, this election cycle isn't going exactly uh, the way the people. <laughs> uh, so, um, so we were able to actually eliminate that ordinance uh, because of the bulky items, because they knew they were doing stuff straight out of unconstitutional, so they repealed that ordinance, but they brought in another one they called Chinatown Emergency, and uh, we formed a line um, March 23rd, and uh, we were able to stop them for the day, but the very next day they came back with 25 police officers, and they cordoned off uh, both sides of the street, wouldn't let anybody in. They told everybody, you got two minutes to take what you want, and get out. And uh, they came with a trash can to load it up, a 96 gallon trash can. They said, you know, you can put your stuff in here. Uh, some people, you know, crying, terribly distraught. And, uh, you know, some people actually begged enough you know, to get two trash cans. But when you read the ordinance, it says personal property. It doesn't say a limit of two 96 gallon barrels. It says personal property. So anything and everything that people wanted to keep and call it personal property, they should have been able to keep it. But instead it all went in the, in the front loader and dumped in, in the dumpsters. And you know, I mean, that's all that you can work up to have. And you know, you need possessions, you need clothing. But 3,000 years ago, we came up with a mattress because you can't really sleep on the ground. It's not comfortable, it actually kills your health. Scoliosis, whatever, I don't know. Um, and, and then you gotta start over again. You know, and you're struggling, you hardly know anybody where you're at. I mean, a lot of people actually were born here, raised here, and tend to die here. And there's no, they're residents just like everybody else. And yet, you know, hey, if you ain't got money, you gotta go. And there's nowhere to go. I mean, you end up in the back, back, back of the line in some other county if you actually go somewhere else. So that's, uh, that's, that's why we've been advocating. Um, uh, they started sweeping Chinatown. They were gonna wipe out the whole entire place and, and the whole intent is systematic to push people out of town altogether, make it somebody else's problem. Santa Cruz actually has it worse because you can't even sleep at night. At least in Salinas, you got a six to six ordinance that you can put up a tent and sleep. But 601, they can come and give you a ticket, $150 ticket. We're actually going to fight that on uh, August 3 uh, at the courthouse. So we'll probably have tents in front of the courthouse and do a little demonstration. And, uh, just make the point, why are you picking on these people and who are already broken destitute and now you're going to make a debtor's prison, and, you know, because they can't pay the fine, so then they're going to get warned for, for not being able to pay the fine. It's uh, undue punishment, you know, it's cruel and unusual. It's, um, and, and so we're not treating people well. And uh, that's actually why I started running for city council as well. Um, but we, we also created this uh, homeless union. Uh, so March 23 was the first day and started camping there every night. Uh, this, this union came together and um, a good dozen or so stayed the first month and, and within the first couple of days we started getting a good five dozen uh, homeless people to also stay because the women's shelter was just closing as well. So we're, we're quitting that while, while we're hurting them one way. We're saying, no, the homeless loves me. That's the mayor's quote. They, they know we're looking out for them, you know, uh, which is on KSBW. Uh, so, where was I going with that? Um, we've been there for now for four months, and uh, we've got about 35 people who are there. We've got um, a set of rules. Um, uh, we're, uh, you know, basically just go to the bathroom before it closes. <laughs> and, um, I pass out three blankets. Uh, and a tent if I can. We get a lot of uh, donations and people get their own set so then I, I um, carry them in the morning and bring them back at night and then that way they don't have to hold on to it during the day and it, it's, it's, it's really a heavy 
burden that's lifted. I mean, you'd be surprised. I've had almost everybody, well, half the people there, come up to me crying. Thank you so much for doing this because you know, all we we just need some sanity in our life. You know, some consistency, a safe place to be, um, and a routine. You know, um, and that actually is is part of the healthiness of being able to. Okay, well, what about you know? Are, are you looking for work? Anything like that? You want? Um, here's here's these services that provide a little bit of service, but mostly just paper. Um, but they're available. Push it. You know, get 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 whatever's available, and uh, you know, fight for your rights. I guess or fight for your privileges, <laughs> maybe. Um, but it, the money's out there, and there's a lot of heart in this community. That's that's what's so refreshing, and it's just a matter of getting getting the, the message out. I think is is the hardest thing. And when we start realizing, oh, we're not treating people as well as we should. Let's do that. You know, uh, you know, we we start passing around these uh, lawsuit questionnaires as well because we need the city to actually follow their um, uh, their administrative procedure. They say they're following the. Um, United States um, Inter-Council on Homelessness, but they're not. They're actually evicting people first, and that's actually supposed to be the very last thing you do. You provide them services, you pro provide them the opportunity, and, and uh, if they neglect it and blow it off, then you've tried. But they're not even trying. Not a single service provider has been out to any of these sites, and they, there's been over 100 cleanups in the last four months. Uh, so you're talking at least 500 people have been replaced, you know, uh, uh, displaced and removed and, and relocated. Uh, you know, so of course, some of those are perpetual people. Um, but there's there's an awful lot of need and how how or concern about neglect, um, in my opinion, on how we treat people, um, and uh, that needs to change. Hopefully, sooner than later. Children 
are men over medicated and they become suicidal, listless, and feeling hopeless due to a system that offers no chance for healing. And uh, we need legislation uh, in the state of California to uh, change some of these uh, methods that they have. Thank you. Don't be shy, Victoria. Your time has come. Public speaking is easy.
there, they didn't meet with us and um, allow Bessie Taylor to be able to provide her son a quality of life. They're currently now in Chinatown in, um, in a program, but we had to advocate and we had to go to those meetings that Wes was talking about. The greatest thing that justice does is build relationships. With Juan Martinez, he knows we have a legacy, we don't have a history. But if you stay inside the house, you don't know your people. In Dillon's Community Corrections Partnership, money was always spent doing the same thing because the meetings were in Juvenile Hall. And no one else knew from 2011 to 2013. I would like you to look at Community Correction Partnership from 2011 till now and look at what they're doing. Because they just ended a contract with Transitions for reentry and recovery that dealt with the whole family and the whole person. And now we have GEO and BI. Environments aren't about where we live, they're about how we live. Yes. And when people are afraid to say black life matters, yes. they're afraid of the power <laughs> of people. Yes. Mm. And who we are, where we came from, mm. nameless and faceless mm. is the accepted norm. If you're a Christian, you start in the middle of the Bible instead of Genesis with Africa, not anymore. So in environment networking and justice, with the collective with Damon Harris, we deal with educational equity. We deal with culture through hearing healing. When that my son Christopher, which is multicultural, part black and Irish and conscious, died by a train in Antioch, it was because I brought him back here. It was because that when that he was uh, when I brought to him to have medication given to him and everything else then they didn't do what they were supposed to do. So in who I am and where I come from, from victims to visionaries, on Mondays and Thursdays at the LSL Center for Fine Arts, we meet. We meet through the streets where that in 2014, that families like Mejia Usmar, Ruiz Hernandez were shot. We stay connected with them, and we hold signs. And like I told the mayor, and like I told me, we don't hate you. We want a voice. We screamed out for the Department of Justice to do something different, and now there's a reform. It's that 18 month reform where they've given the police money and the, and the sheriff's money to be trained in and to bias. But their model deals with why did I stop you instead of community engagement? So as a collective Damon Hair leader, what I do is work with mothers like Vicky Gonzalez, Samantha, and everyone else to educate, advocate, and empower. And we work on racial equity. We work on educational equity. We work on healing through culture. And don't jury tales training. We honor the four generations. We honor the elders. We honor the children. We honor the fathers, the men, and the sons, the women, and the daughters. How environmental justice will become is when we realize that we're each other's keepers. Because from where I've been to who I am, you guys can join with us. I, I ask that when that we show up, and we ask you to speak up that you don't be afraid. And for those people like Samantha's husband, niece, and San Francisco got killed and she was pregnant, mm. that we say the names of those people who are no longer with us in body, but they're in spirit. Because the environment, again, is not where we live, it's how we live and how we know each other. And for Jane Parker, for uh, Alejo, I ask that we invite everybody to come and know each other. When we stood in the midst of all that trash being removed by bulldozers, we helped move the only thing that people had with their pride and dignity. So I ask, and why that Ms. Stone asked me to come and be here is because basically, I mean, in the last three years I've lost my brother Sean through uh, suicide, 
my son and my brother. And the only thing I have left is my voice. Mm. For the people in Chinatown, yes. I want you to give them their respect, their dignity, and the right to who that they really are. I want you to say their names, not call them homeless anymore. I don't want people to be called incarcerated anymore. I mean, for mothers, sisters, aunts, and daughters. I want this to begin to be the day that we realize from the cradle to the grave that the first parents, the first teachers are parents, and to, to follow behind the sister over here and to raise up and to do whatever we can, house to house, because when we reach one, we teach one, and we come together. The sister over here, son, can't come out now because he can't be himself and he's gifted. I want us to stand not in fear but in unity and solidarity without language and make sure that every dollar that we have transparency and transparency and accountability. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, before we call up our next uh, panelist, uh, I'd like to give you guys a five-minute recess. Five-minute break. <laughs>